Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. Wanted to get a chance to get this video up before the fact that this uh, rumor is being shot down. We are coming into WrestleMania season. The Royal Rumble is just right up around the corner. It seems like every day from here on out, we are going to have a proposed WrestleMania card um, that is going to be rumored. Different championship matches, different dream matches. Things are going to come in. Things are going to come out. People are going to say things on the internet. People are going to read things and want to read into them what they want to hear. Um... Just like the rumor yesterday that Roman Reigns was going to beat Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble, as well as Braun Strowman winning the Royal Rumble, setting up Strowman versus Reigns at WrestleMania. I don't think that's gonna, that match is going to happen. I'm not going to give it a second thought. But the match that was proposed yesterday honestly gave me a little chuckle, and it honestly made me smile. That match, of course, would be what this video is entitled, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando. There's a whole lot that goes into this match. Honestly, um, you know, WWE, you know, especially with the uh, Rich Swan uh, versus Neville feud that is going on on 205 Live. They kicked off at the roadblock into the line pay-per-view. WWE will point to other promotions and say that is where a feud started. Look at Kevin Owens. Uh, versus Sami Zayn. Um, look at you know Finn Balor coming in and then having the documentary done on him on the WWE Network, directly pointing him as a member of the Bullet Club and uh, coming from uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, wrestling there and becoming a huge star and then basically taking that stardom and bringing it to NXT to see what he could do wrestling for the WWE. Um, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles is a match that, yes, has been done a million times. They've done this on episodes of Impact. They've done it on TNA pay-per-views. They've done it on TNA house shows. They've done it on independent shows. But it is, you can say, a match that always does deliver. The one thing that made me laugh more than anything else, other than these guys being both, you know, TNA names that jumped over to WWE that in the last year can honestly say have been knocking it out of the park. AJ Styles being on the main roster. Uh, Samoa Joe still being involved in NXT, just coming off of a short NXT championship reign, being the guy who beat Nakamura. Honestly, the two WrestleMania matches that are being pitched around for AJ Styles both revolve around past uh, rivalries. Um, people want to see AJ versus Nakamura because of their match that happened at the Wrestle Kingdom. Um, I'm, I'm still wondering... What day do I need to make sure I have off from work? I know that January 4th is Wrestle Kingdom, but is it January 4th in Japan? Which means that it's January 3rd at night, so I need to stay up from the 3rd into the 4th? Last year, I know I screwed it up. I still stayed up, and I still watched it, and I ended the show. I still made my shift at 9 o'clock the next day. I paid for it. I got my ass whooped. But um, it was a lot of fun wrestling watching that show. I just know that the second that the show ended and I closed my laptop, I don't remember anything else that happened after that. But one of my, one of my favorite things about this proposed match, honestly, is that WrestleMania is going to be in Orlando, which is the second home of TNA because of the Impact Zone being there at Universal Studios. Uh, everyone can remember when the Royal Rumble... Um, shoot happened where they filmed the commercial and took the picture. I think that was like 2005, I'm guessing, when they did that sort of greasers, um, outsiders, sort of, you know, they're, they're about to have a rumble uh, video shoot. I remember the picture looked badass, but I honestly thought the commercial was a little hokey and I didn't like it as much. But seeing all those guys done up, but because of the fact that it happened in Orlando, um, the TNA guys crashed the party. Um, I can remember that Conan was there, Abyss was carrying some balloons, I want to say Bobby Roode was there, um, you know, Rey Mysterio came over and, and gave him a big hug, uh, he didn't know that they were being filmed, he didn't know that they were going to show this on an episode of TNA, um, trying to give themselves a rub for crashing a WWE photo shoot, um, um, I mean, honestly... You know, they, they've done WrestleMania in Orlando before, and everybody can remember that they, they filmed uh, the, that episode of Impact. I believe they did it live, um, and uh, one of the members of the Highlanders was there, 
and they put him on TNA television. And there was sort of a red flag um, that sort of sent around to all the WWE talent, stay away from TNA talent. We don't want to see you guys together. And I think it was Robbie went to the show, sat in the audience. They shoved a camera in his face. They put his name on the screen and he got fired because of it. So I don't know. I, I, I don't really know if they would do that again. TNA isn't really a threat to WWE um, these days. Um, so I don't know. But, you know, that match happening in Orlando would be huge, honestly. I don't think that this match is going to happen. It's not that I don't think Samoa Joe is going to be on the main roster. It's not that I don't think WWE wants to shine a light on TNA or, you know, do some sort of a, a match as a rib. Honestly, I think if you give these guys 10, maybe even 12 minutes, I think that honestly it could be match of the night. And it could be a lot better than the AJ versus Chris Jericho WrestleMania 32 match, um, which was very good as well. Um, I, I just don't think that this match is going to happen. But it certainly would be fun. It certainly would be one of the biggest ribs in history to have. You know, honestly, in my mind, I, from everything that I've read, if TNA didn't fuck with these guys' money both of these guys would probably still be wrestling there. And having those two guys there, for me, AJ Styles leaving TNA is what basically made me stop tuning in. Once I read the writing on the wall that he wasn't coming back to fight Magnus one more time to win that championship after, you know, Dixie um, had sort of made Magnus the champ, that's when I just sort of said that this wasn't worth watching anymore and I just stopped making impact time to tune in for television but um you know tna went to samoa joe basically with the same thing that they went with aj styles even though they were losing lots of talent at the time they were trying to cut costs they went to joe um they tried to get him to cut his money he wouldn't do it he asked for his release and they just let him go i mean joe was a part of that um beat down crew beat down clan whatever you want to call it him mvp uh bobby lashley kenny king but he wasn't even the main guy. He was like the third or fourth member of the, the crew. It's not like he was the Virgil of the NWO. But Joe hadn't meant something to TNA in a long time. He was just was sort of a namesake of what he used to be. Everybody can remember that first Bound for Glory series where Joe finished with negative four points. He wasn't, he, I think he was last. I think he was dead in that Bound for Glory series. And I know the next year they let him get some wins, but he wasn't really in it. AJ ended up winning it. Um, that, that set up AJ um, versus Bully Ray at uh, Bound for Glory. That was de definitely the match that had to happen with the storyline that was going down, even though AJ was leaving the company shortly after. Um, honestly, in my mind, that Bound for Glory was definitely the last good Bound for Glory, possibly the last good TNA pay-per-view. I remember honestly hoping that TNA would die after that so that people would sort of have a good memory of what they were, but they've been going strong for three years now after that. I think that, I guess. I, I can remember they did the Bound for Glory in Japan. They did the Bound for Glory in um, the Carolinas where Matt Hardy won, but I can't remember them doing another one. So maybe it's only been two years. But, you know, AJ versus Joe... You put that match on the main roster, and definitely you have a, a really good match. Um, and those guys really have something to prove, definitely to themselves, uh, to wrestle on that WrestleMania stage. Joe's been yet to do it. Um, but um, you know, definitely to, to shove something down TNA's throat for basically giving up on them and going in a different direction that uh, isn't going to pay off for them in the long run. So I'm hoping for it but I don't think it's going to happen. Every day we're going to have a different rumor from here on out, especially with AJ holding that championship. It's a long shot that I think that Joe is going to debut on the main roster and go right after that WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Um, I think that he will debut in the Rumble, but I don't think that he has a shot to win it.